Hello, welcome to the week 12 uh, of this course on polymers. Uh, in this week, we will focus on uh, polymers in the environment. Uh, we will look at uh, in this lecture uh, the uh, impact of polymers, uh, not just in the form of the way we dispose it off, but uh, the size reduction of the polymers in the environment and therefore, how uh, does it get permeated throughout uh, various uh, locations in soil or in air or in uh, sediments or in the water bodies. And uh, the week uh, we will also review uh, the important field of biodegradable polymers and what is the current status in terms of some of the most common uh, biodegradable polymers that are out there. So, let us begin. Uh, what we will do is uh, look at uh, the uh, fate and transport uh, which we have already uh, summarized before and uh, see how and uh, why polymers uh, migrate to different parts of the environment. And then specifically, we will look at uh, smaller fragments of uh, polymers and uh, over the last uh, decade or so, there is an increasing realization uh, that uh, a plastic bottle when uh, disposed uh, impacts the environment in multiple ways. In addition to the bottle itself uh, being there. Uh, there are in fact uh, other processes which happen which lead to formation of microplastics and subsequent impacts. So, we will review that and uh, also then look at uh, the presence of uh, these uh, microplastics in air or in uh, sediments in soils. So, uh, let us again uh, review quickly as to what is uh, the uh, overall uh, fate and transport uh, as to how do polymers uh, end up uh, in environment. And uh, we have uh, highlighted this before, uh, given the density of polymers is low and this is low in comparison to let us say silt uh, or soil like materials or minerals uh, in organic compounds, uh, which, which have densities uh, which are higher than uh, 2, uh, 2.5 or and much higher. While uh, polymers uh, more most often will have density slightly less than 1, for example, for LDPE or uh, crystalline, semi-crystalline polymers, uh, maybe 1.3 uh, thereabouts. So, you can see that the density is close to water and so, therefore, uh, the uh, tendency of uh, plastic objects to get carried over long distances by floating uh, or going along with the water is very high. And of course, we know that uh, given the covalently bonded macromolecules, uh, the chance for uh, attack uh, in terms of oxidation or uh, any other degradative mechanism is uh, not as high and therefore, these macromolecules tend to be extremely uh, long uh, surviving in the environment. So, given uh, these two factors put together, uh, they get transported over long distances and they stay in the environment over long times. And so, when we think of the polymeric materials which are out there uh, in the uh, environment, uh, what we should also think of is uh, what is the sizes in which they are there. And generally, we uh, classify them as uh, macroplastics and this is basically the objects uh, made of plastics themselves which we throw. Uh, it could be a thin plastic bag, it could be a, a PET bottle, uh, it could be a, a broken chair. Uh, or any other, uh, let us say automotive part or, or any other uh, toy uh, objects which are basically macroplastics. So, this is the either uh, the uh, final uh, sur service uh, part itself or uh, some fragment of it. And the dimensions here of course, are uh, centimeters and beyond. And uh, then uh, uh, what happens is uh, sometimes due to the interaction with uh, environment sometimes due to the process of waste handling, uh, many of them get broken down to uh, about uh, centimeter uh, size uh, pieces. And so, generally uh, we can think of these as uh, greater than uh, centimeters and uh, they can go as high as uh, meters, while uh, mesoplastics are uh, around uh, a centimeter and thereabouts. So, these are small fragments of uh, different uh, plastic objects that are uh, in the environment. And because of erosion, uh, breakage, mechanical loads, uh, embrittlement, aging of polymers. So, several processes that we have discussed uh, during the course that can uh, lead to uh, breakage uh, of these polymers. And therefore, uh, centimeter, uh, few centimeters, couple of centimeters fragments are what are uh, mesoplastics. And then uh, microplastic and nanoplastics are uh, much smaller uh, fragments. 
of uh, polymeric materials. And you might think uh, in terms of uh, you know where do they come from. So, uh, these uh, micro and nanoplastics uh, come from actually uh, the macro and mesoplastics. So, generally we can think uh, for each of these macroplastic to nanoplastic what is the origin. And uh, so, when we say primary it is basically what we are disposing. And uh, so, we of course, dispose uh, macroplastics itself or e e even if we are uh, because of our improper waste management practices, we have uh, macroplastics come into the environment. Uh, sometimes uh, because of uh, the processing at an industrial scale, sometimes because of the breakage that happens during the service life, what gets again into the environment is uh, mesoplastic which are fragments of the original part. In fact, uh, microplastics and nanoplastics also come in as primary sources because uh, for example, in paint we, we have uh, microscopic polymeric particles as an ingredient. Uh, you will be surprised to know many of uh, our cosmetic products or personal care products also contain some amount of uh, polymeric particles, uh, inks for example. So, some various such products are there, uh, late, latex uh, materials which are there, which are the lattices of uh, uh, rubber like uh, polymeric uh, particles in a solvent. So, all of these contain uh, polymeric particles uh, which are of uh, microscopic size. So, they when uh, get discharged into the environment, again they come uh, and get mixed with uh, either water, soil or air depending on uh, what the conditions are. And similarly, nanoplastics also. And in fact, uh, in the last 10-15 years, given our interest in manipulating materials at the nanometer scale, there has been a lot of interest generated in terms of getting particles of nanometer size and using them in several materials and including polymeric materials for properties enhancement. So, by design we uh, generate a set of particles which are nanometer size and uh, include them in our polymeric material of interest. And so, naturally when uh, this gets into the uh, waste stream, again these nanometer size particles are directly again getting into the atmosphere. So, each of these are primary sources. So, they could be effluents from uh, manufacturing units, they could be uh, basically uh, by design put into the products and so uh, these are the primary sources. Now, the macroplastics that we put in the environment given that uh, they are low density and getting carried over long distances and over long times, what happens is due to processes of uh, environmental degradation which can cause uh, erosion, breakage and uh, embrittlement and all these processes basically uh, we lead to formation of smaller and smaller particles. So, a bottle uh, it will initially break down to maybe few centimeter fragments and then uh, from the surface of these few uh, the fragments or from its corners and things like that uh, we will have processes of microplastics and nanoplastics generated. So, therefore, there is a complex uh, origin and uh, that is why we uh, have to really look at fate and transport. Uh, how is a polymeric material there in the environment? In which form is it there, whether nanoplastic or macroplastic? And what is its fate? How is it getting transported? So, so this is a very important uh, area in terms of uh, looking at polymers in the environment and long term sustainability of these materials. So, let us look at uh, microplastics uh, in more detail as uh, this is something which uh, has become uh, of great concern over recently. And microplastics are basically polymeric particles which are uh, smaller in dimensions. And generally uh, the definition is still being worked out and large number of uh, uh, resources tend to refer to basically a micron to few millimeters, couple of millimeters to 5 millimeters as the size which is uh, uh, definition for the microplastics. However, uh, most commonly used uh, definition is sub millimeter particles. So, particles which are less than 1 millimeter, but they are higher than 20 microns. And uh, one of the things about these uh, particles is that the sh there is huge variation in shape because many of these arise due to uh, uh, interaction between the environment and uh, the uh, macro and uh, mesoplastic which are there in the environment 
the fragmentation processes are uh, uh, random in nature, they depend on what kind of conditions the polymeric material is getting uh, exposed to and therefore, uh, you can have uh, fibers, discs, uh, spherical particles, irregular shape, all, all of these are possible. Of course, uh, if it is a primary source, then sometimes for example, we may be using fibers and so since primary source itself is fibers, what gets into the environment is also fibers. So, the different shapes uh, that are out there of these microplastics depend on both uh, what is the primary source uh, and how the shapes that were put into these uh, materials for applications and also depends on the environmental degradation processes which lead to very complicated shapes. And of course, uh, these are uh, insoluble in water uh, just the way many of these uh, polymeric materials are. And uh, the key thing about uh, these particles is the fact that uh, if, if one bottle of PET gets broken down into these uh, let us say 20 micron size particles, the huge uh, surface area that uh, polymer uh, polymeric material is now interacting with the surrounding uh, is a great uh, point for us to think about. So, uh, just to give you some numbers, a 5 millimeter sheet uh, basically this is a kind of sheet uh, which is uh, usually there for many of the plastic parts around us. Uh, we are looking at uh, around 440 meter square per meter cube kind of uh, area for uh, this. Uh, we can think in terms of uh, maybe a, a, a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter kind of uh, uh, a sheet. So, this is the kind of uh, surface area per unit volume. But just look at uh, what happens if the same polymer is now as a 50 micron particle. We, we are looking at uh, orders of magnitude higher surface area per unit volume and it is the surface area through which the interaction with the surrounding happens, whether it is surrounding water, surrounding air, surrounding soil particles. So, whatever may be the surrounding, the interaction happens through these interfaces, interfaces of polymer with the surrounding. So, we have an extremely large area of interactions between the microplastics and the surrounding. So, this is something for us to therefore, uh, think about that their impact can be much larger than what we think when we say that how does a polymer uh, object, let us say a plastic bottle interact with surrounding water or air. The same uh, amount of polymer dispersed as very fine microplastics will have lot more interactions because of extremely large surface area. And of course, why uh, would these impact be? Because the phenomena of absorption, leaching, uh, degradation, all, all of the features that we have already discussed. If let us say this uh, uh, polymer uh, can absorb some organic uh, substances from the surrounding, uh, it can also leach some of the additives which are there in the polymer. And as we have discussed that it can absorb in one location, it can leach in another location. So, all this becomes very effective because of the huge amount of surface area. And uh, because of this, the other impact that it can cause is change in the surrounding medium. So, it could change for example, the concentration of different species. It could also change uh, things like oxygen availability in case of let us say aquatic systems where oxygen availability is required for multiple species and these polymers can act as barriers and uh, they can therefore, influence how oxygen is getting transferred in different parts of the aquatic medium. So, therefore, it can change uh, the properties of the surrounding. Uh, other important effect that uh, these microplastics can have is uh, through ingestion. So, from uh, small uh, animals like fish to much larger animals, uh, we can uh, influence uh, the uh, overall health of these uh, fauna because they get ingested and then these are not part of our usual uh, food uh, items. And so, what happens? What is the overall long term impact? Do they get accumulated in the body? If they get uh, accumulated in the body, what is the overall consequence? If they do not get accumulated in the body, do they influence the functioning of our digestive tract? So, several, several questions uh, to which lot of uh, answers are being generated over the last few years. And so, uh, just to give you an idea how this can also be, uh, in case of ocean, what is known is that uh, there is about uh, uh, 18 kg uh, per kilometer square of, of uh, polymeric materials uh, and, but it is much higher, it is in the beds. So, even though we think in terms of uh, disposing of plastics and given that their density is low, 
we we they would float and move around but there are processes which are happening at times which lead to uh, basically agglomeration and settling of these and again this is a long term uh, phenomenon so therefore uh, ocean beds ac have accumulated much larger amount of plastic and so any plastic uh, amount that is visible to us on the surface is just an indication what could be out there and given again the limited biodegradation of polymeric materials their uh, uh, half life or their lifetime in uh, the environment uh, is quite high and so they will remain as uh, in ocean beds and again if it forms a film over some of this existing species there then you can again see that how it will lead to a significant impact uh, in terms of uh, the life and uh, sustainability of those species. So, uh, the uh, prevalence of microplastics is there in uh, water bodies, uh, we just saw example of how it is there in oceans, but lakes, uh, shorelines, uh, swamps, uh, uh, marshes where there is lot of uh, water, grass, vegetation uh, along with uh, uh, fairly uh, loose soil. So, in all these situations uh, microplastics are present. Uh, there are also been uh, reports uh, and fairly la large number of reports of them being present in uh, various species. Uh, they are also present in soil in uh, as sediments, in ice caps. So, there has been uh, investigation of uh, uh, ice caps in polar region or Antarctic region and, and so, so we have seen that uh, you know the microplastics are present there and uh, they are also present in the form of aerosols. Again because density is low and if size is low then they can become airborne and they can again depending on wind speed uh, get uh, transported across long distances uh, and we of course know that there are aerosols of biological origin also either from uh, plants or from bacteria or other uh, living species microorganisms. So, therefore, uh, we have in as part of atmospheric aerosols even these polymeric materials. And generally when uh, most of these studies have been done, uh, it is not a surprise that the polymers which feature in many of these microplastics uh, pollution are polyethylene, polypropylene, PET, polystyrene, PVC. Basically, the set of polymers which we have seen in this course have excellent properties. So, their use is very widespread. And given uh, they are now uh, disposal and uh, interaction with the environment, large amount of microplastics from these polymers have formed and they have permeated through all these different uh, places in the environment. And that is what is causing concern and significant amount of work is going on in terms of anal analyzing fate and transport in the sense where is the origin of this microplastic, how are these microplastics being generated how are they getting transported so that we can understand and try to reduce the influence of uh, these microplastic, reduce the their migration, it, this is one direction. And second is of course in terms of their effect on any of the flora and fauna where these microplastics have come in. So, both of these directions we are significantly studying. One uh, of course large question that could be uh, thrown at us as uh, polymer scientists and engineers is why are these microplastics given a chance to be generated? Why can't we have polymeric systems which do not generate these microplastics or even if these microplastics get generated, they should be biodegradable like so many other material systems uh, that are part of the biogeochemical cycles. So, that is a valid uh, concern and that is what a uh, lot of uh, work right now in polymer science and engineering is going on towards trying to see whether we can try to look at those polymeric systems which will not lead to problems like this. So, in terms of uh, the waste due to macroplastic has been known for 30, 40 years. It is only in the last 10 years we have become aware that the macroplastic which is disposed of can also lead to such problems. So, with this uh, we will uh, stop here and uh, in a uh, few lectures we will look at the biodegradable polymers, the phenomenon of biodegradation as well as few examples of biodegradable polymers. Thank you.